muted. And I didn't really do anything special. I did go deer hunting, but I didn't get anything. So <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> um, did you crossbow or rifle? How do you deer hunt? Rifle. Rifle. Yes, definitely. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. Okay, so our goal today is to learn about archiving tracking tools in Connect. And we're just kind of waiting here for a second. We have a little leg in the webinar going forward. So bear with me as we move through our screens. Let's start with the basics. Basics meaning what does archiving tracking tools mean? For those of you who haven't experienced archiving, Archiving is basically the process of storing previous data or the prior year's information away for future use if and when needed. Because Connect is a Microsoft-based program, it allows us the ability to store the tools away in Microsoft programs such as Excel. So we ask ourselves, why is archiving important? Um, this is important and the benefits of this are to prepare us for the new year. It allows us to pre-populate for 2016, keeps our tracking tools and our data clean and orderly. It helps us to reset ourselves and our tools for a successful year to come. And it also allows us to easily search data for the current year. Generally, we um, recommend that uh, you archive and reset your tracking tools in January of each year. Which tracking tools do we archive? There are four tracking tools that we recommend. We recommend archiving the Group Service Frequency Tracker, the Managed Accounts Tracker, the RMD Tracker, and the Business Processing Tracker. So before we go any further, I'd like to take a poll. And I would like to ask everyone, does your practice archive their, your tracking tools? So it looks like 71% of you do and 29% don't. <clears throat> so thank you. Gives me a better feel on um, where we should go in the webinar. So at this time, I'm going to let Carrie talk for a few minutes and share what their process is in their practice. So Carrie, um, why don't you help us understand a little bit better how you archive your tracking tools? OK, so for us, we tend to think it's best to archive in the middle of January rather than the 1st of January or right at the beginning. And the reason being is because there still might be some things left over from the previous year. For instance, like I know on my group service frequency, I still have somebody from December. So I don't want to go erasing all that stuff or you know, archiving it and then getting rid of it and something falling through the cracks. So I think at least by mid-January to the end of January, you should have most of your things closed out that you need for the prior year. And so that's 
personally why I think it's best to not do it at the very beginning, but definitely in January, because you want to get it done as soon as possible. So um, like Tricia said, your trackers can stay clean. And like our business processing tracker has so much data on it that it might slow it down if we just kept everything on there for previous years and stuff. So we make sure that um, we get that done as soon as possible. But whenever I'm doing my archiving tracking tools, I don't tend to cram it all into one specific day. I think my personal process is to spread it out over a couple days to a week. So that way I can kind of focus on each one individually since everyone has its own different process. Um, for me, the, the business processing is about the most time consuming out of the other, out of all four tracking tools. And so I tend to do that one first and knock it out and then follow that one by the group service frequency. And one thing that, um, that Tricia helped me to make a note of on the business processing is whenever you're going through and archiving, you want to make sure that you're archiving for the previous year. So like I would archive for 2014, not 2015 this year. But I think that's only for the business processing, right, Tricia? That's correct, yep. OK, so I just try and do the most time consuming one first so that way I can really pay attention to all the details and not accidentally erase something. Um, because I have done that before, is erase some data on one of the connect sites. And once you do that, you can't get it back. So I tend to just like to spread it out. Um, and so to me, the ones that are the least and most difficult, the managed account tracker is really easy to do. I mean, if you just follow the process on the archiving tracking tools ownership guide, it's very self-explanatory and easy to do. And basically, after you've archived the data, it's really easy once you're going in and resetting it, because you're pretty much just changing the status from open to closed. So that one, I think, is just the easiest. And um, GSF and business processing are more difficult. So it's important to make sure that you're, like I said before, archiving the right thing and really taking your time to do it. I try not to rush through when I do it and really just verify and double check things. So um, depending on whenever home office will send us the 2016 RMD list is when we'll import the RMD list for the new year. So I don't think we've gotten that yet. So we are still waiting on that. So I have not archived the RMD list yet for us personally. Yeah, I don't believe those are out yet as of now. Yeah. So that's just kind of my steps to doing it, um, just my helpful tips. What do you find um, the least or most difficult in archiving? Um, the managed account tracker is the least difficult just because, I mean, for us it's not, we don't have as much information on the managed account tracker as we do like the GSF or the business processing tracker. And so, I think it's the least difficult just because there's the least amount of information on it. And like, I mean, like I said before, you're primarily just resetting the status back from closed to open. And then the most difficult, I definitely think it's the business processing tracker because we have like thousands of entries on there. And so we have like um, just page after page. And since you have to do every page, and stuff whenever you're archiving it, then um, it just it's just a lot of information. And making sure you have the statuses reset, or I mean, you're archiving like the in process and everything like you're supposed to be, then to me, that's what is the most time consuming. Mm -hmm. And I see that you um, made note here not to archive items that are in process and that you pay close attention to your dates. Yes, for sure. So you want to make sure that everything that's in process, you're not going through and deleting. Because like I mentioned earlier, once you delete something, you can't get it, but you can't control Z and like undelete it, 
or like there's no recycle bin to go to, it's gone. And there might have been important information or something somebody else is working on that you don't know. And so you just really have to be sure, um, like on the group service frequency, for instance, that, and it says on the ownership guide that you're doing, you're deleting all of the line items who GSF, whose status is read, do not call, letter sent, scheduled, and next GSF. So you have to make sure that you still have the people that are in progress or unable to schedule left on there because you just you don't want anyone to fall through the cracks and miss a meeting or not get scheduled because you know that doesn't look good on our part. But um, so for that one, you just want to be careful not to archive the in process things. And then like paying close attention to dates. Um, that one just comes into the business processing because it's like I said before. You do the previous year, which I didn't know this until recently. So like in a week or two, whenever I archive our business processing tracker, I'm going to be archiving 2014, not 2015. And so mm -hmm. I have to pay attention to the dates and everything like that. Very good. Well, it sounds like you have your process down very well. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, Thank you for your opinions on um, your processes and, and how your office functions. It's definitely helpful to everybody to um, share uh, this information going forward. Well, you are more than welcome. Um, earlier, uh, Kara, you had mentioned the Archiving Tracking Tools Ownership Guide, uh -huh. and I just want to share. Um, I want to share with the rest of the group where to find this information. Our best practice resources. Um, you can follow this path and connect, and you can find this ownership guide. If you go to Turnkey Solutions, and then Client Experience practice tracking folder and inside the practice tracking folder you will find the archive tracking tools ownership guide so everything that you hear today will also be on this ownership guide and I do recommend that you pull this up and um, follow it thoroughly as you're going through your archiving practice um, or your process especially if it's your first time so Well, let's begin by discussing the archiving process itself. All four tracking tools are archived the same way. However, each one, as Gary said, has a different step in the process. And we're going to cover those steps individually as we go along. Um, something to note that's important when um, archiving it's important to know that when you are archiving that you're using Internet Explorer, Explorer sorry, um, while archiving your tracking tools. Some may typically use Google Chrome. However, this browser cannot be used when archiving the tools in Connect. So we, um, we do recommend that you have your Internet Explorer open, and that's how you should be accessing this. So you will first open Connect using Internet Explorer, and then select the tracking tool from the left navigation bar in Connect, if you can all see my mouse here. Um, <clears throat> from there, you're going to select All Items, located directly underneath Edit in the tracker, and this will ensure all the items are being displayed in the tracker. In the top left corner of Connect, there is a tab that reads List. And from here, you will want to check that. You'll want to ensure that when you open all items, that, that you want to ensure that you open all items because certain trackers will automatically default to certain views. Um, so it is really important that whenever you are archiving, that you are archiving in the All Items view. Okay. 
Next, you're going to navigate to the middle of your toolbar and select the option that says Export to Excel. And what this is going to do is take this data from your tracking tool and put it in an Excel spreadsheet. Once Excel is open, you will need to save a local copy of the document to your computer or your shared drive. You should name the file, uh, tracking tool, and the year. So um, in this first case, you would name your file Group Service Frequency 2015. And make sure that you open the file first before saving it just to make sure all of your data is there. Um, on another note that you should make sure your tracking tools are being saved as file type Excel workbook, which it normally defaults to, um, not Microsoft Excel web query file. If you do see the Excel web query file, um, you'll want to change that back to Excel workbook. This is also in the instructions, so um, I don't expect you to remember everything from today's webinar, but I do want you to note those couple of highlights to look for as you're going through the ownership guide. You'll then need to upload this file into Connect. To do so, you'll choose Practice Documents from the left navigation bar that we spoke of earlier. And then from there, you're going to choose Client Experience, Practice Tracking, and then go into your Archived Tracking Tools folder. Just a side note, if this is the first time that you have archived your tracking tools, you'll have to create a new folder called Archiving Tracking Tools. By doing this, um, this is where you're going to be storing your 2015 archived folders. And all you need to do in this case, when you're here on this page, just click New. A new icon is going to open up, and then you're going to select New Folder from the listed options, and then you're going to name the folder Archive Tracking Tools. You may also put the year at the end of that. Once you're in the appropriate year folder, you'll need to select the Upload icon right here. You will browse for the file that you just saved to your computer or your shared drive. Double-click that document once you have found it, and this is going to insert the document into your browser, and then you can now click OK. Your tracking tool has now been uploaded to Connect, and repeat steps A through K for the other three tracking tools. So the archiving process for the four tracking tools initially is the same, for your group service frequency, your MAT, your RMD, your BPT, you're going to take that data, you're going to save it to your computer, you're going to come into your practice documents, you're going to retrieve the file, and you're going to upload it in your folder. So that part of the process is the same. So once your tracking tools have been archived. This is where it gets a little bit different, not much, but just a little bit. And we will talk about each tracking tool separately at this point. Once your group service frequency has been archived, you'll need to remove any old information not from the current year. We don't want to remove anything that is currently in process. As Carrie said earlier, or unable to schedule, those items are still active and you still need them. You're still working on them, so you don't want to get rid of them. Um, therefore, again, you will select all items so nothing is overlooked. And next you'll select the list. Next, I'm sorry, next you'll choose edit. You'll want to edit this list, and now the document will be ready to edit.
You want to delete all of the line items whose group service frequency status reads do not call, letter sent, scheduled, and next GSF for the previous year. So because we're in January now, um, January 2016 is going to be there as well as February of 2016 and also for 2015. So we, we want to make sure that we're looking at the previous year, leaving only those line items that are in progress and unable to schedule regardless of the year, if that makes sense. Um, Take care not to delete any items in the current year, regardless of the status. So from here, you'll be able to delete the line items by highlighting the entire row. And by doing this, you'll select the left box next to the row that you wish to highlight. And then once highlighted, click the delete key on your keyboard, and this will remove that row and all of the information it contained. Just a couple of tips here. You do have the ability to delete more than one row at a time. <clears throat> if you are confident that you have uh, chosen the correct year and your, um, your status of your line items is correct, you may drag, click and drag, and you'll know this because your line items are going to highlight in blue. And also, if you change your zoom to a lower percentage, such as 80% or even 75%, you will be able to fit more on one page. So that is the basis for archiving the group service frequency. Next, we'll move on to the Manage Accounts Tracker. Once your Manage Accounts Tracker has been archived, you'll change all of the closed items back to open. And you'll do this by selecting all items at the top of the Manage Accounts Tracker. And once the view has been changed, you'll need to choose Edit above all items as seen. And now you can change your Managed Accounts Tracker status drop-down from closed to open. To change the status of a large group of line items from closed to open, all you need to do is select the first cell under the status and change it to open. And then right here there's this little blue box. If you click on this tiny blue box at the bottom of the right corner of that cell and you hold this down and drag your mouse all the way down to the bottom of that list, it will change all of the items instead of having to change them one at a time. You will have to do this for every page on the Managed Account tra Tracker. Um, typically, there are only 100 line items on each page. So you may have two pages, you may have three, some practices may have one. Does anybody have any questions up until this point or anything that they'd like to add to either the group service frequency archiving or the MAT archiving? Okay. From here, I'd like to briefly talk about the RMD tracker. You should have received an email this morning with an updated KMG tools application. If you haven't, um, you can let me know after the webinar or let your coach here at KMG know and we'll make sure that you receive it. Has anyone not received this email? I haven't. This is Tara. Tara? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I'll make sure you get you get that, Tara. All right. So 
for the required minimum distribution tracker, again, follow the same process you would to complete the GSF and the MAT and upload your folders into Connect. Once your RMD has been archived, you'll need to delete all of the previous year's distributions. Make sure to select all items just below Edit so that no line item is missed. And next, select Edit. You'll be able to delete the line items by clicking the left check mark box in front of each row by highlighting the entire row. Once highlighted, click the delete key on your keyboard and this will remove that row and all of the information it contained. For further instructions on importing the RMD list for the current year, you'll need to refer to the RMD's tracker ownership guide which is also located in Turnkey Solutions. If anyone needs help or wants me to email this to them or you want me to direct you um, to your resources, let me know and I would be happy to do that as well. And finally, the business processing tracker. Once again, archive your tracker and upload your folder into your Connect site. Once your business processing tracker has been archived, you're going to delete all of the tasks with the status of completed and an entry date, like Carrie said, which is older than one year. So an example of this, when archiving in January of 2016, you're going to want to delete the line items with the entry dates prior to January 15. The reason being, um, especially for the business processing tracker, is that we do want to keep the data for 2015 readily available. Um, unlike the group service frequency tracker or the MAT tracker where things are closed, um, Rarely do you have to go back and refer to these. Um, the, the BPT, we do tend to go back and refer to frequently. So we do want to keep the prior year um, readily available for us to do a search. And this will leave all current tasks and tasks entered within the last year still on the tracker. We don't want to get rid of, we don't want your tracker to be bare. <laughs> So um, from there, use the filters at the top of the column to choose the desired status and sort by entry date. And after that, you're going to want to select all items, again, just below Edit, so that no line item is missed. And then you can select Edit. From here, you'll be able to delete the line items by clicking the left check mark box in front of each row, as we did in the previous trackers. And you'll know because the entire row will be highlighted in blue. And once highlighted, click the delete key on your keyboard, and this will remove that row and all of the information that is contained. Does any of your practices follow a different process? Do you follow the same process? Um, if there are any other processes um, that you have, we would love for you to share some examples. So with the 80-some percentile that already archive your tracking tools, um, how many of you or do all of you follow the same process as we just went over. I'm going to pick on Charity and Diane. <laughs> do you follow the same process that we do? Um, no, not really. <laughs> okay. Were you in the other percentile? <laughs> No, um, we do. We do archive. Um, mm -hmm. We personally don't do it. <laughs> We've had help in that. Oh, I see. Okay. Dawn. Dawn does it for us. She started talking to us, and for me, especially. <laughs> 
she goes, you know what, Diane, it's a lot easier, I'll just do it. And she does it. So I have not personally done it before. Oh, that is awesome. Well, you always know um, where and who to go to to help you out in your process. <laughs> <laughs> um, is any <laughs> that's great <laughs> is there anyone else on the line that has a different process they'd like to share now we know your secret ladies <laughs> are there any questions today before we decide to end the webinar. I want to make sure if there are any questions that um, you have the opportunity to ask them while we have everyone on the line um, and our content expert. Hmm. I have a quick question, Ms. Murphy. Sure. <laughs> um, so for some of the other tracking tools, like just the phone list and things like that, that maybe we wouldn't necessarily need to archive, but we have stuff on there that's backed up from years ago. Is that something I should archive or just get rid of? Are you talking about the phone list in, in particular? Yeah, I mean like the return mail, because there's a couple of other trackers that are definitely, um, that have, you know, data from a really long time ago stored on there for our practice and so I'm just wondering can you archive any tracking tool or is it just recommended to only do these four? Um, it is recommended that we do these four for sure. Um, as far as the phone list goes, the phone list is something that you're always going to want to keep that data available to you so that is not recommended to archive your phone list. For the other tracking tools that, that are in question, um, if you wouldn't mind, I would love to get an answer for you, but I want to be sure first before I answer that question. Okay, sounds good. So if, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Carrie. I was just going to say, we had um, something kind of similar to this in our practice, and so we you know, you don't delete any names or anything off the phone list, and whenever you go to open an entry, you should just be opening up a closed entry. So, for instance, if, you know, I have a client who I need to open up on the phone list, they should already be there on the phone list. But one thing that we did last year or so was um, we went through all of our closed, uh, everyone who was closed out on the phone list and not a current entry like that we were working. And we just deleted all the details and stuff for them because, you know, that's old information that we didn't necessarily need to save or store. So we just cleared the contents of the detail section stuff and like the follow-up date and everything. And then whenever you need to open them up on the phone list, it's a clean entry. We don't ever make an entry for, like, typically, I won't say ever, we don't enter in clients more than once. Okay. All right. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Mm. That's just my two cents about that. Did that answer your question on the phone list, Murphy? A hundred percent. I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy, too, because um, like Trisha said earlier, like you can just drag and like once you get to everybody who's closed out, verify first that they're all closed and then you can just, once you delete, like at the top row, if you delete all the contents from the details section, you can just drag that down to everybody. So you don't have to go down to every section and backspace at all. You know, you can just drag it down and it'll clear it just like that. So it's a lot okay. easier. And if you have like hundreds of people on the phone list like we do, Trisha actually gave me this tip. You can go and minimize your your view to like 75% instead of 100% and it, you'll be able to see more entries than you would. And so, I mean, that's just a really good way for us to do that and keep our phone list clean too because you know some clients we don't talk we haven't talked to since like 
they haven't been pulled up on the phone list for maybe a couple of years. So we don't need that right. information, and you guys probably don't either. So No, no. Okay, great. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey, Trisha, it always feels Georgia. good. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, I would just want to add, while Carrie says this is what we do, it's important to state that we don't use the phone list as record retention. Okay, so mm -hmm. if a practice is, we use Contact Manager as our official record retention database. Oh, we so if do a practice too. is using a phone list for record retention, then you're probably not going to want to delete that history. You're probably going to want to do something else with it. So we just don't use it as record retention. So that's why we're able to do what we do. Okay, I got you. Very, very good point, Georgia. Thank you. And Murphy, to answer your other question regarding um, the return mail or maybe your future asset tracker, um, that is something that we can look into and we can let you know about that. And actually, you and I can look into that. It's definitely, you know, not a rush or anything. It's just something that, you know, while I'm at it, I might as well take care of. <laughs> right. Does anyone else have any other questions regarding the archiving process? All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for your time today, your questions, um, and your feedback and comments today during the webinar. I greatly appreciate it. Carrie, thank you so much for your um, expertise um, and sharing that with us. So after the webinar, there's going to be a survey that's going to appear. And if you wouldn't mind completing the survey, that would be great. If you would like a PDF of today's webinar, I would be happy to email that to you. And also a recording will be posted to our KMG YouTube channel which can also be found in Turnkey Solutions. So if there's nothing else for today, I, um, again, appreciate all of your uh, participation and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.